Thank you very much, Accra of President. I am proud to see those who are 30 to 90, 30 to 90, 40 years ago, if anybody is here. Oh, two years ago, we had <laughs> Accra and Kenya Asante over here, and you represented. So we want to know if there is anybody else, 30 to 40. Okay, so 40 to 50. 1941 to 1950, if anyone is here, any of the year groups. Online also, if you are there, please, you can lift your hands, you'll be able to see it. 41 to 50. Okay, so 51 to 1960. 51 to 60. Let's give a big round of applause, a big round of applause. Uh, please, we'll be grateful if you introduce yourself. You know, some of the executives were not born when you left that. Yeah, that is. 
last three of them over here. And then the last batch from 2011 to 2020. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you all very much for coming. Across. Thank you very much, uh, Carol. Shall we take a look at the minutes of our meeting held on the 26th of July 2020? I'm assuming that you had a chance to read the minutes since you received them earlier. Are there any corrections on page one? Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Then we have as appendix the list of attendees from pages seven and eight. If there are no corrections to be made to the minutes, can I get a motion from the floor for us to adopt this as a true record of our deliberations on Sunday, 26th July 2020? A practice of Homus, seconded by a brother of Thank you very, very much. And we go to matters arising, and I'll brief you uh, as necessary. The first item is the OE Talon Science uh, project. Um, you recall that on the 20th of March last year, we handed over the basic structure to the school. And, uh, we, that was just before the Founders Day, and we indicated that we were constructing four pavilions, uh, which will be commissioned later. I'm happy to report that those four pavilions have been completed, and uh, last December, uh, we named them after the 1974, 1975, 1976, and 1989 years. A short ceremony at the project site, and uh, this was done. They were named after these groups because they contributed more than $20,000 to the science block project. I'm happy also that at the handing over ceremony, the year groups, most four year groups, pledged to furnish the pavilions with the benches. And uh, these benches were going to cost 7,200 cities per pavilion. Uh, two of them, two of the year groups, have completed payment for the pavilions, and uh, the two others uh, have either partially made payment or uh, made no payment at all. So uh, we'll be chasing these, other, these two year groups to complete payment so that uh, the fully furnished pavilions can also be handed over to the school. I would like to report that the school has not yet started using the new science block. And uh, the main reason being the fact that the COVID came soon after we had finished and uh, the school was for several months uh, not functioning and the students were made to go home. And since they came back, uh, 
uh, is uh, pretty partial. Apart from that, the proper um, equipment has also not been provided by the uh, GES and there are no chemicals and so on. So we met, we met with the school authorities a couple of months ago and uh, took inventory of what needed to be provided in order that the uh, sign block will be used fully. Uh, the school has made it known to us that uh, they want to open it to uh, the senior high school to the uh, second year students they also try the SAS 3 to use in preparation for the examinations and then gradually to be extended to the second year and then finally to the first year students. There's a list of uh, items that we need to make this happen. We've taken receipt of this and now we are looking at how best we can provide that. I'm very happy to report that the Agra Yambene and Kwanza here uh, GDPC Group 1991 has uh, managed to get us some support. Um, so tomorrow morning, we will be receiving a check for 150,000 Ghana cities from the old drill. <laughs> We've also approached MTN Ghana Foundation, again through Yao, and we are expecting support also. And uh, we are expecting additional support from BP Oil Ghana. So uh, I would like on this occasion to express my deepest appreciation to the effort that Yao has made to get us uh, moving. Hopefully, before the next academic year starts, the Talo OA Talo Science Block will be fully furnished and ready for use with uh, everything required. The next item in the matters arising is uh, the website registration. I will let uh, the executive secretary talk about the website, how it's functioning, how it is not functioning, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you.
and uh, they have the option to choose what they want online and what can be held by the secretariat. The secretariat will hold the entire data but put what needs to go online online. And we will not, I repeat, we will not either sell or give our details to any third party for whatever reason. So we need our press to help us build this registration base, which we're going to move on to our database. There's provision for Accra communities on it by class or by house. And the fund begins to start meeting different people outside your regular group and all that. So if you haven't registered, kindly register and take part in what is happening there. Thank you very much. So she's covered both the website registration and then the database. The next item there is the OA Secretariat facelift for office complex. I will defer mentioning that I will talk about it again in my uh, in the president's report, which will be more elaborate. We go then to the newsletter. Any comments from the secretariat? The, new, the um, member championing the newsletter project is unwell. We are trying to get her online because she promised to walk us through what has been done. So if we could carry on, then when she comes online, we go back to her for her. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? On any of the matters arising that the uh, members of the Commission took up. Sitting from, understand what he has done is being still on my right now. Oh, what for the condition? Okay.
I think uh, Yan Wati, Prayer Yan Wati is trying to explain how she structured the newsletter. And uh, we're having difficulty getting her here. Yeah. Five minutes. So it's shareable on WhatsApp okay. and also other social media platforms as well. So that's what we've done now with our newsletter. We turned it into a video, video format and that's what we currently have. Um, currently it's called Achimata School Briefs. So it's just brief um, news happening in the school, out of the school, and that's what we currently have for the Achimata and we'll just talk about the work comment and we'll share it and we'll share it on the end of one part of the two dogs we have to do. I thank you very much, Akra uh, Yamwati. Are there any questions or comments on any of the matters that have been? Service for the Water Forest, 
the festival of nine lessons and carols, all of which we held uh, virtually. I am happy to report that uh, our secretariat responded very, very well. Uh, they were able to cope with the requirements, even though we had not been set up for doing um, virtual meetings. They responded as required. Uh, it didn't cost us too much. They were working from home most of the time, and we were able to do it. I'm very happy that the executive committee also did likewise, responding as required, able to attend virtual meetings and uh, make the work of the OE uh, quite uh, pleasant, I must say. So we, we, I thank all of them and uh, hope that uh, we'll continue until we get back to the, the normal situation. One of the things that we are happy to report on is the functioning website. We, the Legacy Secretary has just uh, given us more detail about. So there are 45 people who have registered so far. We believe we can do far better. Uh, we have the means uh, to engage with our press on YouTube. We have the means to engage with our press on Facebook and also on Twitter. These are the means we use to invite you to meetings and to other events. And we hope that you can subscribe to them if you haven't and be able to uh, access what we do. One complaint I received from a press of all generations, especially the younger ones, is that the OAA does not communicate adequately, and we do not communicate. I, I believe that uh, in the last couple of years, we have changed considerably. And I hope a press will acknowledge that. Now on social media, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. we, we are among the alumni associations in this country, uh, that use social media uh, quite considerably. And uh, I do hope that there will be some reciprocity. So as we invest in it, we expect our press to respond. Uh, please uh, engage with us on Facebook, engage on, on Twitter, engage with uh, WhatsApp. The WhatsApp platforms are quite active, but they tend to discuss if you need not have matters. They, they, they discuss anything and then a few are controversial matters. What they don't like, you see on WhatsApp. What they like, you will not see. So please use uh, social media to move the course of Pachimota School and the OA and further than uh, it is today. The database, we've already explained the challenges we've had and uh, the promises that we are given with respect to the protecting the privacy of whatever data uh, you give us about yourself. The database has become important largely because of younger oppressors who want to know what oppressors are doing so they can have access to them and do some kind of networking. In today's world, networking is everything. So uh, if we don't know who is doing what, it becomes difficult to guide young oppressors as they seek support, whatever they are doing. So please help us to identify what we are doing and uh, so on. I talk about the Atchwater School and the Rastafarian Saga. Uh, I mention it because it will be uh, hypocritical, really, for us to have a meeting of all that at this time and uh, pretend that it didn't happen. It, 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 had, it has happened. It is going to be with us for a long time to come. The, there are three points I want to make about here. That uh, Atwater School got the news for all the wrong reasons. We, we, nobody would like Atwater School to be the news because we are doing something that everybody is proud of. At this time, even though we didn't do anything onto it, we were simply enforcing our rules with what is the news, and everybody is talking about us. When the case went to court, and as you all know, we lost the case in court. We lost the case in court. That, that the school board, the school board was the one that was sued. There were two cases, one from Tyre Magai and then in Kravia. Uh, both cases we lost um, for the same reasons. The judge ruled that the decision to enforce the school rules with respect to haircuts uh, effectively denied them the opportunity to practice their religion. So that was the ruling that they gave. They gave several reasons why it was 
preventing them from criticizing or enjoying their rights as under the Constitution. We disagree as we publicized already. And uh, the, so the school board has appealed and OA supported the school board in the first instance and the OA has pledged to support the school board again in the appeal. I'd be very happy to hear your views on this matter when the time comes. I talk about the lands and then the Secretariat building. On the lands, the main, there hasn't been any major development since the last time we met. Last time we met, the most important thing was that the Supreme Court had ruled in favor of the school with regard to the land that the Usu Mankarani was trying to take away. Um, and that Supreme Court ruling was overarching. In fact, it gave the school board capacity to take decisions on all lands, um, regardless of location, so long as it belongs to Achimota School. We proceeded to get assistance from the government, from the president, to create a trust that will manage the school land on behalf of the school, and also give the trust the authority to lease or alienate a part of the land to third parties. We only do that with the permission of the president. That permission was given. So we proceeded to make the arrangements for the um, putting in place the trust B that will show which parties were responsible for managing the water students and any revenues that will come out of that uh, arrangement. I must say, we've not been happy with the way things have evolved. The Minister of Education took it upon himself to lead the process of preparing the trust deed. And in that process, made himself a trustor of Ajimata School Lands, which the OAA strongly objects to. The colonial government, in its wisdom, handed over the, the, the entire land of the school to the governing council of Achimota School. Not the Ministry of Education, not the Department of Education, not the government or anything. It handed everything to the governing council. Why? It wanted it to be handled by an independent body that had responsibility for the school and the school only. That was the sense behind it. That was the same sense that made it necessary. That was only the governor, and by extension, only the president, can give permission. Not parliament, not a uh, ministry of education, nothing whatsoever. Only the president. The assumption being that the president will be impartial. The president will have the interest of what the who are part and soul. So anything, if you follow the Supreme Court ruling, Anything that makes any other person, apart from the governing council, a trustor of that water school lands, is or cannot be in the of that school. That's why we have objected to it, and that's why we are trying to engage the Ministry of Education on this matter. And that if it fails, if it fails, if we are unable to reason with the Ministry of Education, that it cannot be. Indeed, if you look at the um, board of trustees that they've established. OA is what we represent. We went to court and fought for the land for the school, and the minister has prepared a trustee that excludes clearly the OA from any involvement with the money government. It's unacceptable. I'll be happy to hear your views on this. And then uh, we talked about the, the secretariat. Several times over the last several years, uh, people have spoken about the inadequacy of uh, office uh, space at the school clubhouse. We talked about the need to rebound the place, the modernize the place, and so on. Um, just to assure you that the executive committee has discussed this fully, and um, we are in the process of developing plans for not only modernizing where we are currently, but there's a longer term agenda of the personal building that we can use.
somewhere on the periphery of a commercial school lands. That can be also used for commercial engagements to generate revenue for OE. So these are the long-term things that we have. But in the next few months, we actually mobilize resources to begin with on modernizing our office at the Slavos. A major thing that we'll be talking about today is the trust fund. And I'll, uh, the very soon I'll invite the chair of the board of trustees of the trust fund to give us highlights. But what's important that for the OA executive committee, the Atwater School Endowment Trust Fund should be a major, major part of whatever we do as old Achimotas to help the school regain whatever. And so we, we, we are talking about how to uh, recapitalize the Norman Trust Fund over the next 12 months with uh, $1 million. And before the school turns uh, 100 years old with uh, $10 million. Uh, we do this as part of a broader scheme to prepare for a new achievement. So what is this new achievement? The new achievement that we are talking about is the achievement that you knew uh, 20 years ago, or 30 years ago, or 40 years ago, 50. An achievement that produced men and women that everybody in this country was proud of. But mindful of the fact that in the new world, technology is what makes a big difference. The technology has changed the way teaching and learning are done anywhere in the world. So how do we get to a, a new situation where students from Achimota School are able to compete globally by virtue of their access to the newest technologies and the teachers who are well versed, well skilled in the use of technologies and engaging in an interactive manner with students. So in that new Achimota, the technology is going to be the big difference. Yesterday, I was very happy that the 1997 year invited me to a launch of the uh, legacy project. They, they, are, they are turning 25, and so they are responsible for a legacy project for, uh, to mark the uh, um, Silver Jubilee celebration. And they are going to lay five optic cables around the entire campus, currently Eastern Hong Kong, I will be extended to the Western Campus. So we will have cheaper access to connectivity and that will make it easier for all the buildings on the school compound to be connected and the students and teachers will have access to cheaper uh, connectivity and be able to use this in a more effective way to modernize. So the OAA is investing through the year groups massively massively in modernizing Achimota School for the future. The challenge is how do you keep making these investments when you cannot have a say in the governance. That's what we want to change for the new Achimota. We want to change that. We want all Achimotas to be part of the governance arrangements. Currently, we are part of it by virtue of being or having two slots on the school board. This has been extremely useful over the years and that's something that we seek to maintain. But there are signs. There are signs that this might not be the case in the near future. There are signs that uh, we are beginning to centralize the management of uh, senior high schools in Ghana. There are signs that the Ministry of Education would like to be actively engaged in the management, not in the uh, policy making, if in the management of schools in the manner that takes away the contributions or downplay the contributions of uh, other stakeholders. These other stakeholders may be alumni associations like us or parents. And it's important that we engage with the appropriate authorities to deal with these things. The OEA Executive Committee has begun work on this. We are convening on the 24th of June a meeting of 26 
alumni, the associations uh, around the country, the issue of suspects, the people that we consider to be our peers. But for that reason, they are real peers, hmm? not the Accra ones. Hmm? <laughs> I know you were concerned about everyone I was, I was looking at it last Friday, but they uh, are real peers. So we meet on the 24th of June. I spoke to all of them individually, and they have the same concerns as we do. Everybody is concerned about how the governance of schools in Ghana is uh, being affected largely for political reasons, and that we want to stop that. So, in the new agenda, we want to raise resources for the school, and we want to be part of the management of those resources to be used principally for bringing our students to the cutting edge. That's what the so we are going to prepare a plan which we will share with you, and in that plan you will see how technology will be made available. Teaching teachers how to teach, teaching students how to learn, teaching management how to run a school, how to manage a school like Atmata. So managing Atmata school is not like managing some small school in the I will mention it. <laughs> so that's what we want to do in the new, and we need your help as much as we move. That's like. So for the immediate, I'm appealing to all our press and their friends and families to contribute one million dollars. Right now, the, we have only about forty-two thousand dollars in the kitty for the um, Atimata School Endowment Trust Fund. We want to raise it from $42,000 to $1 million within a year. It looks quite daunting. It looks like a huge task. It is a huge task. It is. Nobody can pretend that a, a million dollars is nothing. No, nobody can do that. But as you are going to remind us, if a thousand oppress Give a thousand dollars each, we are there. Where will we find a thousand apprentices? So even if we don't find a thousand, but we find five hundred. And then another five thousand apprentices give us a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars here and there. We will make it. We will make it. There are many of you, many of us, who are interested and willing to do it. So we can do it. I'm very happy that already, as soon as we mentioned eight people, I see three of them in this room today, eight people have said, I'll give you the thousand dollars. If I one of them, I'm, I'm trying to persuade him to change it from thousand to five thousand. <laughs> but we will get there if today there are three in this room. If by time we are giving another ten, either here or online, have made their pledges. It will be a good example for those who are not in this meeting or outside. So, ladies and gentlemen, over to you. Next slide. So, uh, let me finish my remarks by talking about the ideas that we have uh, uh, basically to uh, wish to transform the school so that the school will play the role for which it was set up. The, the school was set up to lead the transformation of this country from a colonially run country to one that was run by its uh, own people. We've done it for several years, but we can do better. That's the mission at Mother School for the future. Let us all do our best, and in so doing, we can be a part of that change. And one day when we are not here, we'll be remembered for being the agents of change, bringing Atwater School back to what it was supposed to do, and contributing to the transformation of Ghana. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Let me, let me invite, as an extension of what we just done, two people to come and talk about their projects. They have, I've told them they have five minutes each. 
So uh, the, the 1970 one year uh, is 50 years old this year. And they, as far as their legacy project, are trying to provide solar power to the whole school, reducing the dependence on ECG. That's a very lot of it. So Accra, a man with a man, uh, is here to speak to that now for him in a minute. And Accra family goes to you, the family of Rome goes to you. Uh, of course, from his name, we know the political party in Rome. He has a book that makes sense and it's a political party. <laughs> but he's not yet to talk about it. No, sure. He is the president of the, he is the president of the 1997 year group. And they are doing the fiber optic building of the school. So, uh, a man may be speaking for five minutes and the man may speak for five minutes on, on what they are doing. So, you can see how the change is happening through this award. Okay. I understand 71 and 81 are working together. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, this is a oral follow-up from 81 years ago. Um, this is a joint, the legacy project for 2021 is a joint uh, undertaking of 71 and 81 years ago. It started off as a 71 year old project. And, uh, and then eventually, the problem. Yeah, it started off as a 71 year old in April. 2019, I think, soon after the AGM passed, the dis decision was passed to do this joint 50 and 40 year group. So the, the one year group are now with us. And then after the 71 year group finished the sort of the blueprint how to use solar to electrify the Archimota School campus. We, the headmistress requested support from government through the Ministry of Energy on the Scaling Up Renewable Energy Project. And so the team that is actually doing the work right now is, involves the 81 year group, it is 71 year group, senior officials from ECG, the Ministry of Energy's Directorate for Renewable Energy, and then the Energy Commission's Renewable Energy Group. So let me briefly say that the, the blueprint is to use facilities at Archimota School, basically the rooftops and some of our buildings, to produce solar energy to feed into the ECG grid. And based on the regulation we have, you net it out of the supply you get from ECG. And as a customer, Archimota School can go as far as going to net zero, meaning that we produce and put into the ECG grid as much electricity as we take from them on an annual cycle. So that's the blueprint. And it, is, it, it requires uh, investing in solar facilities on some of the rooftops, reducing the losses of electricity within the school, meaning that uh, the, the school network is very old, so there's a lot of loss of electricity. And then also the wiring in the buildings over age and also losing a lot of electricity. So that's what the big concept is. Um, as I said, in April, we switched to the 71 year group handed over to the technical committee involving the data group, and the master plan for implementation is complete, meaning that we have detailed drawings and implementation plan for the old assembly hall and the new assembly hall ready to go when funding is in place. And also we have uh, up-to-date modern uh, electrical wiring drawings for each of the 15 old houses down towards the assembly block. Sorry, the administration block. Um, third is we, are, we finished the funding plan, which is that we'll try all the way to do one of the projects, the old assembly hall as a pilot administration. But the, the Ministry of Energy through the uh, Scaling Up Renewable Energy Program, which is funded, to be funded by African Development Bank, 
will pick up the modernization of their home network, ECG. It will turn the network into a smart grid with uh, fiber optic capabilities. It will also finish the new assembly home and then at least do the administration uh, block. But we realize that for the 15 dorms, we have to also find ways of funding it. So we brought this to the attention of the executive, and now we're working with them on how to proceed. But on the funding side, we need to get pledges of about 300,000 CDs by the end of June in order to kickstart the construction of the old assembly of the solar system. And then we have nine months finish paying for that. In September, the African Development Bank and the Ministry will work out funding for the remainder. And hopefully, by December, we'll have the funding in place for the administration block, rewarding the administration block, and finishing off the network. The network, the ECG network is very important uh, to fix because the losses are huge. I think this is one of the areas that we, we need, definitely need government involved. Um, the fundraising is led by the one year group. We have to to yes, we are leading the fundraising uh, effort. But anybody who also wants to help can uh, uh, follow us or call us and get involved. It's a project that we need, it's a project for all of us. So anybody who has any little help can call us and then we will collaborate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President distinguished executives, senior and junior colleagues, all protocol observed. To borrow from my party, self-government for OE now. <laughs> that is speaking for the human tradition. And to borrow from the dark Papuzia tradition, a chorus beyond age. <laughs> With this in mind, OE 97, we had a number of projects to look through. It even included expansion of the Agri Chapel. When we were here, we were just 1,500 students, and yet we couldn't fit, and now it's 4,000. But we looked through a large number of projects and realized that for the new normal that we are in, with lessons being held online, the best project is an e learning project which would include upgrading the ICT infrastructure of this school to international standards. And with me here today to go into the little bit of that in just three or four minutes, I have my general secretary here, Ralph Nitete Amlamu, in the back there. And I also have Stephen Kemeche, who is the legacy committee chairman. And we are doing everything in-house in the spirit of Aquarius Beyond It. And our project, the first phase costs less than 100,000 dollars for the first phase. And similar projects elsewhere have cost millions of dollars. Only because our ICT contractor is one of our mates. He's not taking any consultation, no profit, nothing whatsoever. <laughs> I will now invite Akira Kamache to go through the Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll pick up right from where Ochi left off. And also, our project is in three stages, and it's all structured to come together um, to improve or address our theme, which is making Achimota School an ICT center of excellence. So first, we are to lay the fiber optic cable on campus, and then we will subscribe to Google Classroom for the school, or on behalf of the school, and then we will train the teachers on how to use 
at the platform. So in terms of the fiber infrastructure, we are laying it on the eastern compound across or along the, the over and then extending it into facilities within the, the over and, and, and outside the over. So if you see the, the, the red line is actually where the uh, fiber cable is passing. Then the red line represents um, the technical team tells us for 41, thank you, the red line represents a 42 core fiber optic cable line. And my understanding is that one core alone could power the entire school, which means that you have quite um, uh, some amount of redundancy. Then a two core cable is in the green, that links the uh, 42 core to the various buildings. So for now, the uh, first part of the project, we are connecting Agri Chapel, um, the Agri Block, uh, the science, all the science, uh, the old science uh, labs, um, the Oetalo Science Block, the new assembly hall, the old assembly hall, um, all the houses, the OA secretariat, um, yeah, we just added the head uh, uh, house as well. Um, and then again, the, the, the key thing is that the, the, the infrastructure can carry data, it can carry voice, it can carry, uh, carry video. So we are looking forward to a situation where we could have, as my uh, uh, project contractor was saying yesterday, our colleague was saying yesterday, we could have a chest service where each house goes to their common room in, in the house and they, we, we build the chest service for them to, to be part of. So that is the kind of infrastructure that we are laying. Work has begun um, some days ago. Um, so if you go to starting from the clubhouse, uh, we began laying the uh, 42 core cable along the over. Um, next. Okay, so work has begun. Uh, we are hoping that in about a week we will finish laying on the cable and then we will now go into one of the ICT labs where we will start installing the equipment that will power uh, the entire infrastructure. The second aspect is the uh, subscription to the old classroom. We have contacted Google because we couldn't afford, or the school couldn't afford, to subscribe to the commercial um, uh, version of the platform. So we wanted the free version. And the free version, of course, is available to public schools like ours, but with a certain conditions that we needed to meet. So they gave us six of those conditions. Most of them are business as usual. The only two that were quite substantial that we wanted to address. But we also want to, as part of the project, have or provide each student an Archimotor domain email address. So an abroad reserved many years ago, the Archimotor domain, archimotor.edu.gh, and he was willing to relinquish it to the school. He has done so. And a website development team has been working for some years back. We joined them because Google has told us that the schools that they sponsor with the, this facility must have a functioning website. So it was very good that we could just approach the website team and we started working with them. One of our colleagues is a writer. We've actually asked him to start writing the content he sent uh, to the team the first cut. You compile it all by the middle of July. We should have all the content created, submitted to the school for approval, and then the website will be, uh, will be, will be up. Then also, Google requested us to show them what they call the institution's official accreditation. In discussion with the school uh, management, we've written to the management, they've added their letter, we sent it to GES, requesting for some document that we could um, send to Google for um, 
the subscription to be granted to us free of charge. Then, with regard to teacher capacity building, uh, the idea again is to improve or build on the project that has already begun uh, somewhere during the, the COVID. Um, after a doctor of GIS, uh, who is principal of GIS, approached the school and started a pilot with five teachers to train them as uh, uh, training the uh, training the trainer to come and train the others so they could start engaging students um, on Google Classroom. We pick up that project and we are expanding it to include all 200 plus teachers. We began by administering a questionnaire to the teachers. We met them on Zoom about a week ago. And so far about over 25% of them have completed the, the form that we gave them. The form will help us categorize them into those with basic skills, intermediate skills, and advanced skills. We will train the trainers who will help us train the rest and maintain the system. The training is scheduled for July and August. Our hope is that by the fourth quarter of this year, we will have completed the fiber-optic cable infrastructure. We will have completed um, the Google Classroom subscription and completed also the training of the teachers. Make the facility available for use long before uh, first quarter next year when we are actually celebrating our 25th anniversary. If you want to help us with contribution, these are our accounts. We will share this presentation on all the uh, 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 OA platforms and you can also contact us and uh, we will give to you. Please, next, next. Uh, yeah, we need to recognize the support we received so far. From the very beginning, we engage all the key stakeholders. The board chair met us at the secretariat, gave us his input. The head mistress and her team have been extremely supportive. Um, we, we write to them that we want a contractor to come on the on, on or contractors because. Initially, we had contractors before we chose to come and, and take measurement and give us a bill. And within 48 hours, the letter was responded to. And the support has been like that since. Um, the OA national president has been very supportive. Even yesterday, he emphasized again his support for this project. And indeed, it's even in the plan of the national OA. And we are very grateful for that. The secretary and our units, uh, we are most grateful for all the support. It, your, your place is where you congregate. Even sometimes print our document before we submit. Abra Dr. Mary Shen has been of great support. And then Abra Mankwa and his team were building the website that we are supporting them to, to complete. And one of our colleagues owned Volta Palm Enterprise, which is an IT firm, an IT infrastructure firm, who is working for that. Um, the president mentioned that he is doing it all basically for free, except for the cost of, of the project itself. These are contacts, um, fundraising at oa97.com, and then um, our number. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very, very much. OA 1971, 1981, and 1997. Any comments, questions, or any other things you've heard this afternoon? Yes, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it may be a bit late in the day, but it looks to me the two groups are doing um, the same thing, right? They are complementary because to have a smart grid with fiber optic capability, um, you, you're going to lay a fiber network. Meanwhile, 1997 is also laying a fiber network. Um, for your SCADA capability to use a fiber to monitor the network, you will use less than 1% of the capacity of the fiber. And 42 core is enterprise, it, it powers cities, right? So, uh, and both of you are appealing for funds. So then it makes sense to simply uh, talk to each other and maybe um, reconcile your designs and see how 
uh, you can reduce the cost of the project uh, for, for each other. Um, also, I would like to get in touch with you because one of the things that we're doing at this OA um, uh, executive is to train teachers, not just in the use of Google uh, Classroom, but to improve their performance and, and the educational outcomes. And we are working with Accra Federation, who is a member of the Educational Subcommittee, and also I'm sure I know the consultant that she's probably using. For you. So again, it makes sense for us to get in touch with you since it's all training of teachers. So I will reach out to you, get your, get your contact so we can work together. Thank you.
would like to respond to the media. Accra President, thank you very much. Um, right here, we have support and you align with the other year groups as well. But just to provide an additional information, we are actually not laying the fiber cables underground. We are, we are using the, the poles, um, the poles that are around. So we are not digging. That is why our cost is also manageable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments, questions on anything that we mentioned this afternoon? Thank you, Mr. President. When we came to SS1 in 1997, 1995, one of the first statements that stuck the meeting today was by Akora Charlotte Graves. She said, don't just pass through Achimota. Allow Achimota to pass through you. And a few days ago, I came to Secretariat, and on my way out, I saw the two students walking with a teacher up the hill. And it was as if they were in heaven. You could, you could sense their sense of relief that they were at home. And as a legal practitioner myself, I wouldn't want to go into the nitty-gritties of the case. And I looked at the boys and the joy on their faces and everything. I believe Atlanta has enough rules to stop and even the Constitution itself and the laws of Ghana. The, I, I believe that we don't risk opening the floodgates to anything negative as long as they are well supervised. And we have enough rules to get any students out in case of misbehaving. My time, my head was very strict. And I remember the time I went to the swimming pool and we had a list have been put on the board of expelled students. So we all come swimming and we ran there. And some of those I was running with, their names were there. So we're there, the water was dripping and we didn't know what to do. So I would, it is up to the board, but uh, I believe that uh, I would side with us allowing things to be. If another case, is, another case rises up, we can pursue it. But regarding the appeal, I would say we should, we should allow um, sleeping dogs to buy. Rather keep an eye on the boys and other students because we do have the rules, we do have the rule book, we do have enough structures in place to make sure that um, uh, nothing happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Technically, my servants of the Ghana Foundation. Yes, a quick comment on uh, what you just said. I think I understand where you are coming from. But you know, consistency is also important. And fairness, of course, you know. I think for that reason, I don't really need to look at this very, very carefully. I don't think anybody, and I think as a president has insisted, we are not denying them access to them. But why are we here as old as you There's a set of things which shaped and molded us. We have to make sure that we don't lose that. And in a lot of my travels around uh, particularly African countries, why aren't we killing each other in Ghana? It is not because we are special. It is because of our boarding school system, the kinds of systems we went through. That's what has molded us into a nation where we place our classmates first. In fact, most of us are closer to our classmates than we are to our own siblings. And we risk losing some of those things. And I think it is for that reason that we need to think through this you know, very careful, and not just simply say, let's leave him more to life. So that's my first thing. The second is the, uh, you know, the fiber object. I know we said we're handling it with our poles and so on. It doesn't matter. We are creating a services infrastructure. Think of it as not just fiber, but a services infrastructure. 
even if it's a long pole. You can have electricity using those poles. So think of how do you build that basic infrastructure for all the services as we implement you know, some of these you know, projects. And I'll be quite happy to talk to the team because I have built a few fiber networks, you know, uh, in particular in Nigeria. So that's an idea. And also the ICT team. We would like you to look at the database. We like to tie the database into what you are doing. You know, if you are going to be, you know, the ICT center of excellence, we have to be able to communicate among ourselves. The OAA must be a key component of the ICT, you know, center of excellence, not just the school. Because the school without the OAA is like a body without an arm. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Any... Yes, sir. I will do it. How is the school paying for How is the school paying for the Okay. Uh, it's been done by the school board. Um, so it will come generally for the school projects. Yeah. The OAH has not paid, I don't think it has to pay for anything yet. Yes, Professor Davison. Yes, sir. Cut your hair, you will die. 
And have, have you ever got licensed Kanka, Kanka Mia to the abuse court and to carry to the original high court? So the uncle too was not satisfied. He said, no, I will appeal to yet another higher deity. So they went to Kukufre, somewhere near Wenji. And he slaughtered three fowls. And two of them died prostate. The other died head down. He said, oh, it means you can cut your hair without dying. But before you do that, you have to go back to Tigare, which is the high court for him to perform certain rituals, so that when you catch up. That's how Akiyami Nkabi eventually went to school, became a lawyer, became a minister in uh, Buzia's regime, became a member of the investment committee in the uh, uh, Rimans regime, and became one of, one of the biggest entrepreneurs the country has ever had. So the moral of it is that we can do the high court, we can do the appeal court, we can do the Supreme Court, we can even do the purification and see what it will end us. Thank you very much. I think we got to move on. Anyway, in response to Daniel, uh, I, I understand you, I understand the need to avoid bad press by all means, and that we are doing everything possible to ensure that. As I've said, to several address last Friday when we had the town hall meeting, I made a point. And this case is not Achimata School versus two young men. No, it's not. You see, so if you leave it as Achimata School versus two young men, then you miss that bigger picture. It's, it's, uh, it's, we, we live in a time that our described as an extension of modern liberalism. It's modern liberalism. An African version of that. You know, some may describe as postmodern. So there are many things that are changing around us, some of which we can control, some of which we cannot control. They happen. And you learn to live with them. But when you see change, being forced in a manner that uh, defies your basic rules and will lead to other things that you cannot do anything about. It becomes your responsibility to say, slow down. Let us manage change slowly. It is always good for institutions, whether the church, whether it's universities, whether it's schools, to manage change gradually and not have it foisted on you as is happening in this case. It is not about two Rasta young men. I've seen them. I met them in court. They look to me like nice young men. They don't look any, especially in Gambia. Hmm? He looks like a very normal son or grandson. He, I thought that would do him a lot of good. And I'm quite sure he has a lot to offer at Water School. So that would be a problem at all. But I need to be thinking about the bigger picture. Where is this postmodernism leading us? Where will it end? Who will come next? Who are those riding behind this? There are people who are taking advantage of what is going on, not because they believe in Rastafarianism, but it's much more true. So we've got to be careful. I agree with you. Let's do everything we can to avoid bad press, and we should, we will do that. But we got to keep our eyes wide open. If there are no other questions, comments, shall we move on with your agenda? May I encourage the kind of elected committee to come back to the table?
at Waters Way Endowment Trust Fund, a report from the chair of the Board of Trustees, and then uh, look at the accounts before we continue with the launch of the capital campaign. So may I invite Akra Abrada Mesa to present his report on the Endowment Trust Fund. Save time. I will take it that everybody has read the report. It's quite short. So I will only stress on one important aspect in the report. Uh, the NDK, the, our attempt to improve funds coming into the uh, asset fund. We tried to engage a fund manager whom we thought would also be a fundraiser. So we contacted NDK, which is owned by Africa. And throughout our negotiations with them, we thought they were going to be both fundraisers and fund managers. So we were going to charge quite a hefty uh, percentage on um, any funds that they manage. At the end of it all, they came and told us that no, they will only manage the funds, that it was up to us to raise funds. And up to that time, and even up to now, our only method of raising funds has been the 500 cities a year that Europeans contribute, which itself is very, very difficult to follow up and collect. So we said, well, it's because we cannot raise funds that we thought you could help us to raise the funds and then manage and then take your percentage. But if we are going to raise the funds and then you will only invest and take that huge chunk, uh, then we didn't think that uh, it was a good deal. So we decided to approach another fund manager, investor. We had a lot of discussions with them. We met them on a, on a number of occasions. They came and made a presentation. And then, the long and short of it, when they realized that our uh, influence were dependent mainly on Yoku contributions, they also said, oh, well, we have so many things to manage, and we cannot you know, take your so But it was obvious that it is because we wanted them to also be the fundraisers. So that has now raised a big issue of how we can invigorate the fund and make it a real endowment fund. Endowment funds have a very bad history in this country. The University of Ghana has tried five times to have a viable endowment fund. There was one set up when the university was first set up. I gave a this time, we launched one. My time, I launched one. And next time, we launched one. I think Tego's time to be launched one. And the current vice chancellor has also launched one. They all don't end up very well. All because of the approach that has been adopted in raising funds for investment. So this is why we want to raise this issue, so that today we can discuss it and see how best to work. It looks like getting the fund manager has not has proved not to be the real solution to our problem. Now when we go to our annual uh, accounts, you that one too, I won't go into the details. The most important thing is that the, the auditor has said that we are clean. Uh, our funds have been well managed. Because of COVID, you will see that what is in our coffers for 2020 is slightly lower than what was in the coffers in 2019. Well, partly because 2019 we had bigger inflows because of the relaunch of the fund in, to coincide with the anniversary celebration. Uh, 2020, in spite of the COVID, our administrator has done very, very well, and she managed to get more year groups to contribute 
even arrears to their contributions. So if you look at our inflows, the 2020 inflow was slightly higher than the 2019 inflows. But overall, our expenditure too went up. Salaries expenditure went up. And uh, we also made a donation of the equivalent of $5,000 towards the uh, science block. And that has made our current uh, total uh, investment go lower than 2019. So on the whole, that is really what our situation is. You can look at the details from the reports that you are holding. If you have any questions, we are here to answer them. Thank you very much, uh, Akra. I want to thank some board chair for the Endowment Trust Fund. I think that, um, yeah, he spoke into it, uh, but yeah. Uh, I, I will invite the treasurer to. Present the accounts formally to us, and then uh, we will uh, pass it to the motion uh, to accept it. But before doing that, um, remember I said that uh, we we are trying to raise a million dollars within the next twelve months. Um, from what the board chair has indicated to us. Fundraising has been a major problem. Getting good fund managers has uh, not been easy, and so on. So the executive committee has discussed this uh, in some detail uh, and has proposed uh, some solutions uh, which we believe can enhance the fundraising capacity of the trust fund considerably, uh, and also. Uh, in doing that help with the investment decisions that are made by the fund, which will then encourage uh, contributors. So, uh, for starters, we are proposing uh, the co-option of uh, Akra Piao, Benham Consent, to the Board of Trustees. The, the, the regulations allow for co-option of uh, uh, other persons. So, we are proposing that Akraya, who is a, you, you heard his uh, comments on the getting projects. He knows everything about money. <laughs> he knows where the money is. He knows how to find it. And he knows how to use it. That's how I've come to know him in the last year or two. So, um, the treasurer, Akra Antoinette Kofi, is also another financial experts. Um, the executive committee is convinced that uh, once they get involved, um, it should be, and I mean, that's not going to be the end of it. We, we, we are going to uh, take a more active engagement with the Endowment Trust Fund. Uh, we are going to mobilize money. We are going to help them to make the right investment decisions. Um, we want to get the trust fund to inspire confidence in our press and others. And so we're going to do everything possible to assist the board of trustees to uh, uh, be able to raise this uh, one million uh, dollars within the next 12 months. And before we are 100 years ago, we have 10 million dollars invested in the name of the Atomata School Endowment Trust Fund. So if by hearing that there are problems, you are thinking that, oh, why should I put my money in the distance? You should know that uh, arrangements have been made to secure your funds and also make sure that the funds grow. They grow as rapidly as they can in order to ensure that we are able to achieve the objective of uh, creating that new achievement or developing that new achievement. So let me invite uh, the treasurer to walk us through the accounts. Good afternoon once again, fellow. I'd like to take us briefly through the 
master's school endowment fund, endowment trust fund accounts. I'll start off with the statement of financial position as of 31st December 2020. So the cash and bank balances at the end of 2020 was uh, about 10,976, down from 16,394 in 2019. I believe Papa Ivan Ivan Sands spoke to some of the things that accounted for this. Sundry debtors is an amount that is owed the endowment trust fund by the main old at Morton Association for which payments would be made in 2021. Investment balances went down from 280,414 at the end of 2019 to 243,593. And this, may, this was mainly the result of the redemption of five, the equivalent of $5,000, which was about 26,350, which um, a donation, there was a redemption to donate to the Science Block Fund, and, and that's what accounted for that decline. In addition to that, the investments are mostly held in um, the Data Bank EPAC Fund. The value of the fund, because of the impact of COVID, went down in 2020, and that also accounted for part of the decline. And that led to us having current assets of 270,715 at the end of 2020 compared to 312,954 at the end of 2019. On the liability side, we had accruals of 15,501, slightly up from the 2019 balance of 13,858. The additional accrual was mainly for SNET and PAE taxes in December, that was to be paid in January. Our accumulated fund went down as a result of all these from 299096 to 255215 at the end of 2020. And that was our statement of financial position as of 31st December 2020. On income, on our income and expenditure statement for the year ended 31st December, we made a deficit of 43,881. Income was mainly from um, the year group levies, uh, which, we, which as Professor Diamond has said, went up year on year. Um, however, investment income went down partly because of the redemption. And you will see note six on page eight of the endowment fund account, which gives you a breakdown of the income number. But our total income for the year was 23,447, down from 31,709 in 2019. Our expenditure, on the other hand, more than doubled. And part of that is the uh, donation that was made to the OA for the Science Block Fund, and also the impairment loss that we had to take on the value of our impact fund. And that is what led to the deficit for the year 2020. And the movement in our accumulated fund is a result of the balance that was brought forward at the 1st of January, less the deficit that we need for the year, and our accumulated fund for the endowment trust fund, as at 31st December, was valued at 255,250. So, Mr. Pratt President, on, the, on page six, we have the net cash flow. I've spoken to the items that make this up. So, I'll only comment on the cash and cash equivalent at the end of the year, which was the near cash amount that we held. And it was 10,976, as shown in the statement of financial position, down from 16,394 in 2019. A lot of the funds held in the endowment trust fund was actually held on investments. And that brings me to the end of the presentation, unless there are specific questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Treasurer. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I invite the auditor to give us an assessment. Independent auditor's report to the members of Atlanta School Endowment Transfer. 
in a real opinion and then read the report of other legal and regulatory requirements. We have audited the company financial statements of actual school and government transfer, which comprise of a statement of financial position as of 31st December 2020, income and expenditure statement, and accumulated fund account, and cash flow statement for the year there and there, and notes to the financial statement, which include a summary of significant accounting policies as set up on pages 7 to 10. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept. The financial statements, which are in agreement therewith, give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the fund at 31st December 2020, and of the income and expenditure statement and cash flow statement for the year then and then, and comply with the international financial reporting standards of the Ghana Companies Act 2019 Act N90. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. Compliance with the requirements of Section 137 of the Companies Act 2019 at 992. We have obtained all the information and explanations which, to the best of our knowledge and belief, were necessary for the purpose of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept in the balance sheet and income <laughs> expenditure and abated fund account and agreement with the books of account signed by Boston Mulai on behalf of BLM Associates, dated 9th. Thank you. Thank you very much. I grab us from there. Are there any comments or questions on the audits, the financial statement? Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> you did mention that the Atmotra uh, line, the, the line, is vested uh, in the council and is being managed by the board. Am I correct? Okay. So that includes all the lines that were previously. Uh, Taking over by around the so those are have been commercially those pieces of land have been commercially developed and now they belong to us. Is that correct? By the way, uh, a village, uh, Christian village, and what have you. Yeah. Today, they are commercially developed. Yeah. Their values are high. Yeah. Is there any reason why the term endowment, which it approves to at modesty, now we are commercially developed land, and we are depending on 500 cities a year from uh, across to raise money for the endowment fund. My question is, with all this land that Mother School has, probably the biggest land piece, I don't know about this one, and yet we cannot leverage that, we cannot leverage the commercial side of it to raise an endowment fund. Is there any restrictions that uh, maybe the legal people can tell us why we cannot do that. Can you introduce yourself? Oh, my name is Patrick Manson. I'm from Yellow House. <laughs> and uh, I'm right after Dr. Kwame Wachi in 1964, Yellow. Thank you. I thank you very much, uh, Akra. You asked a very important question, and indeed, that is what we are all working towards. You, I don't know if you were here when I spoke about the uh, creation of a, a, a land trust and the development of a trust deed and uh, the, what has ensued with the Ministry of Education. We need, that is the whole idea that uh, we'll be able to generate revenue from all the lands that have been encroached upon. But we haven't 
there's a court ruling in our favor, but we haven't been able to actualize uh, or realize the, 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 uh, put in place the arrangements that would give us access to those facilities and hence generate the revenues that uh, you talk about. Yes, it is certainly on the cards and we intend by all means to enforce to the letter the ruling of the courts.
So can I get a motion for us to to be do with the figure of moves? Yeah. The figure of moves Mr. President, I move for the adoption of the uh, report of the economic transfer, the financial statement. Thank you. Seconded by? Seconded by Prasa Robinson. So thank you very much. Any counter motion? Thank you very much. So the report is adopted. The next item, okay, let, let's do the OAA uh, accounts first. Then let's do the uh, launch of the campaign for the last two. So, if I'm ready, I think I can present the financial statements. The reduction mainly went into the science block, the, the, the building of the science block. Um, we collected some monies in previous years that were actually deployed in the year 2020, and that is why you see the reduction in the investments and bank cash in the cash and bank balances that we held. On the liability side, we held current we held accounts payable and approvals of 41,567 down from 70,092 in 2019. And our net current asset position was 412,090 CDs, down from 806,350 in 2019. When we saw the endowment trust fund accounts, we did speak about the loan that was owed by the old Ashmortan Association. That is represented at cost in the statement of financial position. And when you take that out, we have net assets of 402,090 CDs, down from 796,350 from 2019. On our statement of income and expenditure for the year ended 31st December 2020, we raised income of 2.3 million 2,305,254 CDs. Down from 2,305,254 CDs, leading to a deficit of 399,201. We made other income, which was interest on treasury bills, of 4,941, and that brought our deficit for the year to 394,260. As mentioned, the biggest item on the expenditure was the related to payments for the science block, and that is the main driver for the deficit for the year. 
our accumulated fund for the year ended 31st December 2020 started with a balance of 796,350. Applying the deficit for the year 2020, our accumulated fund position at the end of 31st December 2020 was 402,090 CDs. The statement of cash flows highlights what we've just spoken about. It starts off with a deficit for the year. It actually, it, it adjusted for increase in accounts payables and approvals. And then there's the decrease in our cash and cash equivalent for the year. When that is adjusted off the cash and cash equivalent at the beginning of the year, it takes us to the balance we see on our statement of financial position, which is 453,657. And this is broken down into a cash at bank of 378,699, mutual funds 46,696, and then treasury bills of 28,262. These, these statements, together with the notes, the financial statements, represent the position of the Old Ashmortan Association for the year in the 31st December 2020. There are more details in the notes. I will take these as read unless there are specific questions which I will then address. In the interim, I will ask our auditor to read out this Independent auditor's report to the members of both Edge Mountain Association. Opinion. We have audited the accompanying financial statements Old Achmata Association, which comprise of a statement of financial position for ASA 31st December 2020, income and expenditure statement, and accumulated fund account, and cash flow statement for the year then and then, and notes the financial statements, which includes summary of significant accounting policies, assets out of pages 7 to 10. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept, and the financial statements, which are accumulated therewith, Give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the association as of December 31st, 2020, on the income and expenditure statement and cash flow statement for the year they ended, and comply with international financial reporting standards in the Ghana Companies Act 2019, Act 992. Report on other legal and regulatory requirements. Compliance with the requirements of Section 137 of the Companies Act 2019, Act 992. We have obtained all the information and explanations which to the best of our knowledge and belief were necessary for the purpose of our audit. In our opinion, proper books of account have been kept and the statement of financial position and income statement and the fund account are in agreement with the books of account signed by Ross Mondai on behalf of DLM Associates dated 11th June 2021. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there questions, comments from anybody, including those online? If there are any persons online who want to make any statements, please do so now. On Zoom. I hear there's somebody on Zoom who wants to do Yeah, I don't know why. Gloria, can you get them to speak? What's the name? Yes, please speak out. We are listening to you on Zoom. Thank you. Uh, regarding the uh, fundraising issue, uh, and somebody mentioned the Ivy League, uh, I have a, a close relative who worked in that capacity for one of the Ivy League schools. Uh, and also, uh, among the authorities are many lawyers and many bankers. It just mystifies me that uh, we seem so helpless. So, I'm going to ask whether I have your permission. Uh, well, how should I say? I, I cannot volunteer for this relative uh, of mine okay. uh, So, uh, uh, this relative of mine is not an opera, uh, although uh, they are uh, the child of my opera. Uh, but I want to know what I, uh, I have your permission to discuss with this person how to do it uh, in 
the US. Actually, in the US, uh, I'm a, a professor in the US, and uh, I don't want to call the meeting, but every college, which is this, so we kind of leave it for five months, every college has a small group of people who are doing fundraising for the college. The university as a whole has a big organization who raise funds for the university. And all the small groups in the colleges report to the big group at the university. Uh, I just want to say, altogether, we're not, we're not in the US, so I'm not saying that we do exactly what they do in the US. But it seems to me that it should be possible uh, for us to tap those who have a little bit of expertise there. And they don't have to be full time. Uh, the US are called development officers. That's their full time job. So, I'm going to stop talking, but I need someone to say, uh, I can uh, ask my, this person whether they will be willing to uh, be available to share a little bit with somebody. There's no guarantee that the person is going to be online now. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I forgot to just say, we have heard you, and we will be very happy to talk to whoever you put us in touch with. Thank you very, very much. Private. Well, what he was suggesting, incidentally, may I say that he was in Form 1 when I was in Oasis. <laughs> yeah, um, with the Labour Endowment, we tried to engage a subsection of JP Morgan of the US who are going to raise funds on the basis of what is done in the US. But once again, we came against the same bottleneck where they were saying that if they don't raise any funds at all in any given year, they still take a cut, albeit lower for, of whatever we have in our coffers, albeit lower than whatever. But if they raise any funds over and above what we have, then their cut goes higher. So I think in the US too, uh, they, they may be facing similar bottlenecks, only that with them, they are always able to raise some funds through other means, which not really we don't see as yet to have. We don't have situations where people die and leave their whole world to, to a school. You have to take care of your family first. If you have a house and you don't leave it to your children, or your nephews, if you happen to be a Hakan, you are in trouble. So these are some of the obstacles that we have been faced in, in this respect. Thank you. Is there anybody else online on Zoom who wants to speak? Anybody else on Zoom who has a, a hand up? If no, can I get a motion for us to adopt?
In the OA account, it shows the full accrued interest till the end of 2020. That's where the break is. Are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Thank you. Since since you have uh, you are satisfied, why don't you move for us to <laughs> Sorry? Good. I, I didn't see you. That was for the first one. So I grab this step who moves. I am encouraging you. <laughs> Seconded by Alexa Matthew. Sorry. Thank you very much. So we've adopted the financial statement as a true record of uh, finances, and uh, the auditor has established that they've been kept with, and we've adopted this as a record of uh, transactions. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. So now we go to authorization of the executive committee to fix the retail fees. Can I get a motion for authorizing the executive committee to do that?
So she came up with this, uh, this video, one where the school song uh, is sung and you heard it, and the other one, which is, it comes in the form of a jazz uh, presentation. Uh, so I, I told you to choose one, and I said, no, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat, so I, I will let the oppressed themselves decide what, what they want. The general, we are hoping that sponsors from the radio and TV stations will take this and then regularly throughout the year they will play it to remind our press to make contributions. We are expecting that uh, you will send it to your classmates wherever they are in the world so they know it. Whenever they hear it, they will know that they have to make a contribution. Whether that's five dollars, or that's like ten dollars, or that's a thousand dollars. And every Accra, everywhere in the world, hears it and the those that we are trying to raise a million dollars at least uh, in one year. I've seen the question come from online asking how we arrived at the one million dollars. How we arrived at one million dollars. Uh, we are now in the process of doing the uh, strategic plan. And uh, the one million is based on what it took us to do the science block. The science block cost us almost one million dollars. So if we want to do, so it is it's an indication of the strength of a uh, press. So we are guided by that. So the one million is our target for one year. Uh, we know that press can provide one million in one year. That's the, the bottom line. If we are able to do more than one million, we'll be more than pleased. But we know that uh, our target is by 2027. Uh, we, are, we have $10 million there. $10 million invested. Uh, you, you, you look at the conservative rate of return, we are the experts. About 15% of all too much. 10%. Yeah. That gives us an amount. That, so the school will be getting what, uh, $1 million every year hmm, to run, uh, repair bungalows, repair houses. I fix the games field, one million dollars. Now, we yeah, buy reagents for the science lab and so on. It's far more than they are spending today. So, come 2027, at Water School, from the investments made by OH Motors, we'll be getting about a million dollars every year to run the school on top of whatever the Ghana government gives it. That's the thinking behind all of what we are doing. Uh, if our calculations work on the lands then that we are uh, trying to do with the trust, the land trust, if it works, we are looking at about five million dollars a year. But they, can they, they can't hear me. Oh, I'm sorry. They say for further on the please, whoever, wait, let the person speak. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, uh, Grant Sarasari. Uh, the wonderful idea, we we'll definitely consider it. Uh, we we'll take all the suggestions that we get from here to the executive committee and uh, uh, make sure that they are well represented in the strategic plan that they are going to work on. Yeah. Fellow um, across, I would also like to point out that the intention is to recognize anyone who donates a thousand dollars to this campaign. We we are going to put up um, a wall, uh, right, and um, all the names will be listed on the wall, recognized in a prominent place in the school. We, we are currently having a discussion regarding the location so that um, there is some concrete recognition of all those who contributed as well. Uh, as uh, Prof said, if you are able to contribute less than a thousand dollars, we are grateful for that and we will recognize it in uh, appropriate ways as well. Um, but regarding this fundraising drive, the other reason why it's important is because as we are pushing for autonomy for the school, at some point, right, we will need to support the school because if we want to make it independent, we, we cannot have a school that is independent and still run into the government to write checks to pay teachers and to buy reagents and all of that. So, um, the two go hand in hand. Uh, as we strive for independence, we also need to support the school properly in financial ways. All right. Accra beyond aid, as him, <laughs> as <well. laughs> What does one get for making a contribution or helping to raise say? Okay, we have just answered that. Um, that's what Akra Yao was talking about. If if uh, you give us a thousand dollars, your name will be engraved on a wall uh, somewhere near the administration block. The, the, the location is still open under discussion, but your name will permanently engraved on the wall so that your children and your grandchildren, great grandchildren, can always see what their uh, father or mother did. Okay, another one. Mm -hmm. Always willing and happy to support the school. May I know if there is any uh, policy to assist Akres in getting um, their children into this enviable school? Yes, there is a policy that grants us some uh, 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 protocol admissions. Uh, the number is uh, always negotiated, but many, many Akres have had their children, their nephews and nieces coming to the school through the protocol admissions given to OAA. Before, before you can take advantage of it, you must have paid your dues and all other uh, obligations that uh, you have. From Accra Philip Abwaji, mm -hmm. he says, I would like to propose that the endowment fund be invested with government um, and not private funds. Okay, we, we have heard it. Uh, the, the, the fund managers will determine it. The, the fund managers will determine it. So the suggestion will be considered by the fund managers. Any more? Yes, someone um, asked about this KDD. He says, um, can I suggest not only your name, but include house? I think when we are raising the... Okay. All right, but uh, by adding the house, I think what we've done is uh, for the strength block, we added the year group. So it was your name and your year group. That, that should be sufficient. Okay, um, this is from Akra Shanti. He says, um, can we get a more professional video? Something more appealing that speaks to the conscience of Akra's worldwide and other corporate bodies too. Okay, we, we, we will think about it. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, th this is uh, a question. Yeah, yeah. Just a follow up on the comments on the video. Yeah. My name is Eric Kajari, 2003 Yeru. Um, I mean, I'll just ask him, is there a way um, we can be strategic about uh, involving the younger actors? Because, I mean, I've seen the video, um, it won't attract me and the younger generation. Right. That is the first thing. Um, <laughs> the second thing, so is, we are talking about a $1,000 per person and order. So if I'm a younger generation, let's go like two years ago or five years ago, let's say counting from 2000 to current um, state. Like, what can we do to be able to entice us to start contributing in our, in our own little way than to wait till we are older or in a bigger position before we can give out a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars? By the way, the person who made the video is still next to you. And I think it was your classmates. <laughs> 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 so it was made by a young person, <laughs> but she's also mindful of the fact that the people who are likely to contribute are older. Yes, I mean that's the reality. Uh, the, in the narrative, it's made clear that no amount is too small. It is too for your classmates if they want to, but you're able to organize parties where you spend more than. Thousand yeah. dollars. I know your classmates. You do parties where you spend more than that. So how do we how do we uh, bring to your classmates the idea that uh, uh, some of the money that we spend on ourselves we can give to the school? You know? So I'll be very happy to come and talk. You yeah. know, and uh, the offer you made that let's do something. I know what you did with the hand drop, with the art school. Hmm? So bring us something. There's nothing wrong with having several different videos for different uh, audiences. So we can look at that. Hmm? Okay. I have three. Let me start with the old one first. Then I'll come to the other old one here. Then I'll finish with you. <laughs> I remember we commissioned our granny Motabe to make a similar video for us, which the endowment fund looked at, asked for modifications to it. I think we even paid for it. What I can't remember is what, what has happened to it. We handed it over to you and nothing came out of it anymore. Or whether the Motabe never finished the final impression. Uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, the fund. One of the things that the school is also looking at is this whole idea of how do you recognize contribution. You know, like in some places, naming, you know, builders of the people, naming the institute. It's a much more general thing. Clearly, somebody's willing to give a million dollars. Probably, you know, the world is not enough. So that discussion is also going on. The other thing, comment I also like to make is that one component is the amount that people give. What we should also look for is the breadth, meaning as many people as possible. For example, you know, in the US, we want 100% contribution, even if you give a dollar. For example, people who just graduated a year ago, they go after them to make sure that that class contributes 100%, even though some may be giving only $5. Because once you get into the habit of giving, then you are likely to give continuously. And that ties back to the database, knowing where oppressors are, who the oppressor are, and so on and so forth, is critical to the fundraising. But again, that's another thing that the executive committee is seriously looking at. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, our executive committee of 1997, Daniel Pabas, and two of us are present here. Akura 
proud to tell you about myself. And we are praying a thousand for your speech. And as we were sitting here, I was observing the Zoom. I realized a lot of my senior colleagues at the back, Accra Patrick Sobojo, Accra Kofi Epilabi. These are extremely wealthy, and I've seen some judges, but I don't want to be in contact. So. I think in the chat box, if you just make your pledge now, I will volunteer at the PA who was in Livingston House 2015. Very effective long plan. My driver is available. Make your pledges in the chat box. Tomorrow, we'll be at the office to pick up the check. It's as easy as that. We can get the thousand dollars for five We can get it today. But only at least, let's raise it to ten million dollars. That is my name. Thank you. Self confidence. I grasp your name. You are good. Edward. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I know it's short. So, to go with the message, it was mentioned along the line, we need some influential chorus. And when I was looking through the Russia has been given to us. One of the think tanks of the endowment fund is even our own honorable finance minister, Ken Ferretto. We could get him first to donate and make a message that Achimota made me who I am. As such, I'm promising to donate so much, we will also donate. Then, back to what my uh, senior said about the threshold, so to speak. Do we, for example, know that we have about 10,000 accurates who we can reach? And know that if it's not even thousand and it's a hundred, when we multiply, we'll still get. Because if we take about ten years back, probably most of them don't have jobs and they can raise a thousand dollars. So then we are still looking at the older folks who probably are also in retirement and paying for grand grandchildren things and all that. So so let's look at these things. Thank you very much. Those on the line. Um, this is from Accra. Um, Kweku Sechi Ado. Mm -hmm. Can I recommend that younger Accra year groups come together to contribute in work so that they can be recognized as a group? Sure. We, we fully agree with you. Accra Kweku Sechi Ado, we agree with you. We, we did that for the Soil Block and we will do it again on this road. Kweku Sechi Ado, how much are you pledging? Kweku Sechiado, how much are you pledging? Um, I will pledge in chambers. <laughs> in chambers. Okay, thank you. I'm definitely going to continue. I'm definitely going to continue. Definitely, very good. We, we thank you very much. We, we appreciate you. Okay. Any more online? Okay, so this is for YouTube. We have already in the new sign block installed smart boards. Uh, there is already a program that we are discussing with the school that would allow students in the various houses to also have access to various gadgets, uh, including laptops. There is a project that was introduced by the Ministry of Education that allows schools to have uh, um, Xbox here. Yes. So there are a number of things going on. The project that the 97 year group is introducing will connect all the houses that we have on, on the compound so students will have Wi Fi access in their rooms. Stop it, please. Any others? No, thank you. Okay. There was a yeah, chief.
uh, getting a kind of uh, uh, an amount each year group would have to pay. So that we say maybe from the year 91 to from the year 2000, each year group may be supposed to pay $20,000. Or supposed to try and raise this amount. So that there's that sense of encouragement of the year group president and its members to try and identify people who would in turn help in generating those amount. But if you separate the videos and you put it on the WhatsApp platform, I mean, they just look at it and, and that is it. But let's say if you say this particular year group is supposed to pay, let's say, $20,000 out of this amount, they will in turn have to sit and identify the people that would I mean, help in terms of paying it. Again, I think the ceiling on the thousand dollars is, I mean, quite on the high side. I think, as someone said, we can target the young one to have just finished school. So if we can get the award system, okay, for thousand dollars, we are going to do this. Those going to pay, let's say, five hundred dollars, we are going to do this for them. Maybe two hundred dollars, we are going to do this. And so that we don't lose out on those down there who can the way we could get a lot but then my concentration is so much on the thousand dollars and the thousand dollars and then we leave those down there out. Thank you. Thank you very much Prof. Thank you very much. Um, just uh, a couple of comments. So the whole video on the new water, water very fantastic. What's missing for me is what the money will be used for and if there's some sort of blueprints that can be shared over a period of time because that will speak to my conscience and make me want to contribute. Then secondly, I just want to share some feedback on the 1997, how we found ourselves because when we identified our project or even prior to that, we had to find ourselves and there were about the previous executive, we had less than 100 active email addresses, not even active members, just active email addresses. And I recall when I went to see Auntie Eunice in the Secretariat, and she gave us an admission list, our 1995 admission list, not our graduation list in 97. So what we then did was we went back, we looked at that admission list, and we launched the campaign, Finding Accra 450. So we were saying, let's try and find 450 of us. On the admission list, there was about 520. So we ran that campaign, and very surprisingly, in less than eight weeks, we found 420. And we've got full details, first names, married names, professions, locations, cities, and uh, we shared that database with the secretary. And it's something I think the uh, ONF um, executive should look at to try and find a course to drive this initiative. Thank you, thank you very much. Isaac Christ. He's asking, is the Achimota Golf Club going to contribute to the Diamond Fund? We will certainly appeal to them. We will appeal to them for support. Good evening. Yes, I'm Mama Kita. Yes, for the fundraising, I know that a lot of people here um, are choral music or people who love uh, classical music and all that. So you can um, organize the program. I know that right on the um, COVID, it's, it's now coming down. So you can organize the choral program involving the students in the school allow and other actors come and perform. Thanks to um, Carol's service to raise funds, maybe the yearly fund, um, Thanksgiving service, Founders Day, to also raise funds during towards all these. Um, Projects. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I think. Uh, yeah. Let's take this last comment and then we move on. Thank you very much. Um, so, my name is Ezekiel, 2013 year group. So, I think I have a strategy that we can employ to get the younger generation of girls to be involved in terms of the fundraising efforts because we have the energy and even though we do not have the money we can be able to 
leverage on that energy to get people outside the Accra fraternity to contribute. And I think that will be one way where if you're able to set targets for the various year group within the younger generation, even if that year group is not able to meet that target, it can be able to collaborate with another year group and collectively it can be able to meet that particular target because um, these young people are willing to go out to door to door to campaign. They'll be doing it for the politicians and making them win their campaigns. So we can go to use this strategy to also get them to go out there and knocking on doors to also get people to contribute towards this. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Chairman of the Endowment Fund uh, Committee, I'm really very happy to hear this uh, suggestion come because we tried to do something similar. This agri chapel that we are sitting in, when we were in Form 1, we were given little, little notebooks which whenever we went on holidays, we tried to raise funds from our uncles and aunties. If it was sixpence, threepence, they would write it in. And then when you come to school, you come and make an account. And the highest uh, fundraiser was giving a prize at the end of the year, during prize giving day. I remember when uh, uh, Sylvia, uh, whatever, what she did was that the father was a high court judge. So she would always go and sit in front of the high court. And every lawyer, every judge that passed, she would give the notebook to him or her to sign. And one she would two she would, she always won the prize. We tried to do that for the current generation, partly because they spend only three years here. And by the time they leave, they don't have that spirit of the school that we who spent seven years have. And we thought that if they were involved in the three years, during holidays, on their own, voluntarily, to do this sort of thing, they will develop that will to raise funds for the school. But in the long run, we're told that human rights, young education service, will not be in favor. So we had to abandon that idea also. But if I hear that now, those of you who have left school, albeit only recently, can do that, I think we should give them all the support to do it. Hello. Yes, yes. Okay, this is from Accra DV Osei. Let's look at options and encourage Accra's to opt for one. One, monthly installments of $1,000 by in 10 months or to 12 months, the person will have been able to achieve it. Then quarterly, 250, then once payment, 1,000. Okay, we are separate. You know, all the ideas that are coming up here, the executive committee, we have a, a finance uh, subcommittee, we're going to look at all of these things and then uh, see how best to uh, put them into practice. So, yes, madam. So you all heard, 
Well, uh, when Einstein has spent five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars. Thank you very, 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 very much. You made my day. I've not slept well for some time. This will be the day I will read this to
Uh, one of the things that uh, we've been discussing in the executive committee is we do not want to stop the activities of the year groups because that's important. You know. On the other hand, there are some big projects which we can only do at the old OEA level. So what we are thinking is that we will continue with the year group projects. But then every so often, we would do a big project for the OE. So, so that's sort of the model that we are thinking of. You know, so if we can do that, you know, there are projects which are just beyond you know, the uh, capacity of you know, a single or maybe even three year front. But it can be done, for example, the science block could not have been done by a year group. But at the OE level, you know, it can be done. So this is what. So when we think of the anniversary, the hundredth anniversary, we are thinking of a big project. You know, not the kind of thing that will be done by a single individual. Yes, and in addition to that, one of the things we are thinking of is, for instance, with the solar project which is going on. The 7181 are looking at the two assembly halls, and then we are looking at Ministry of Energy coming in with a project funded by AFDB to do the main administration block. That is over $1 million. But we are also looking at getting each house to come together to fund the rewiring of their house and then the solar panel for each house. So, this is something that we'll be taking up subsequently so that each house will come up one way or the other when we get a final cost of what it will be for each house, so that the houses, Sleza, sorry, starting with that house, we work for each one and then get it done. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, Mr. President, I, I see a certain conflict in terms of contribution between what the year groups are doing, what the houses are doing, and what the national level is doing. Uh, my colleague shared a document with us not long, too long ago where um, young groups are expected to be doing a project almost every five years. We in 97, for instance, when we finished teachers' appreciation five years ago or four years ago, we began to contribute towards um, um, a silver jubilee. We are told there is something we need to do at uh, year 30 and thereafter. So, from a, um, a long-term planning perspective, at the year group level, there's always that engagement to contribute towards something. So then, if there are projects like this, it becomes, becomes conflicting. So my suggestion is that, uh, somebody suggested it earlier, I want to emphasize it, that we, this fundraising, we, we, we give good test to the year groups, so that it is added to the year group Contribution and there is mobilization at the year group level is you know a, a step down and perhaps perhaps more effective than at the national level. Thank you. Thank you. I think I think you make a, an important point. The as Rakwari explained earlier, there are large capital projects that hardly any year group can fund. Hardly any year group. And fun within a year. So it is those that the OAA, as a, a, an aggregated body, is undertaking. When it comes to legacy projects, year groups are free to choose whatever they want to do. My experience has been that sometimes year groups overstretch themselves. They take on projects that uh, tend to drag for a long time because they are struggling with this. So if the OA is doing the large projects, year groups should be a bit more realistic and uh, take things that will not overstretch them, bearing in mind that they, are, they also have obligations towards the, the overall projects. You know? So my, that's my advice, that uh, let the OA do the big projects for the whole school deconstruction, etc. 
let me end groups. And there's a total list of things that you can do. Uh, Harold here is uh, in charge of that. The total list. Pick things that will not break you down. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's the advice that I will offer here. By all this, we will look at all the suggestions here, what year groups you do, and then they can factor that into whatever arrangements they make, and what individuals can do. And uh, we, I'm very happy with the reception we have received today. It uh, emboldens us to now work with your ideas to come up with things that will make all of us proud. You know, there's no single solution. There will be multiple ways of you know, uh, bringing in the funds. My experience at the year group level is that if you want to do uh, solicitation only at the year group level, at the year group level, they're not likely to get people who want to contribute $5,000. At the OAA level, you can't. Because what happens at the year group level is you divide it among members of the year group. And nobody sort of is motivated to stand out. For us, at the OAA level, that freedom you know, exists. So let us combine the two and you know, bring all these suggestions that have come together and try to see how best we manage all of this. I think the year group is important. We don't want to stop the year group. But that prop said, if you are mindful that there are big projects going on at the OEA level, then essentially you can size the year group project accordingly so that you don't have to it yourself. Yes, Ralph. Thank you, Mr. President. Will the development of a sports gymnasium or a sports complex for the school um, it's not be something that would be to celebrate as part of our annual centenary? The reason why I say that we, we, over the years, we tend to focus on fact, science being one of it, and the library recently. But uh, we, there hasn't been any effort placed on recreational activities and, and sports to help revive the old sports traditions that the school used to once in general. Yeah, thank you very much. In fact, uh, we are compiling a list of projects and we are going to divide it, we are dividing it into projects which should be OAA wide. In fact, it even goes, one of the suggestions that I have here goes beyond the boys gym. gym. They are looking at making the games field to almost tartan tracks, stands, so that we can train here, we can use it to make, that's a big, that's a huge project in this room. So we have a series of projects that we are going to put together. So like the rehabilitation of the water supply system in the school. That is also something which one year group cannot um, take care of. Currently, GWCL is getting us an estimate of what it will cost to change the whole system and then to cut the water supply of the school from the other, you know, when the tank is filled, it goes down to another. So, because we are all linked together, what can we do to ensure the water supply here? We are putting together all the various projects, the ones which should be I mean, overall, and then the ones which year groups can take, and the ones which we can get support from government, like what 7181 they are doing. They are working together with ECG, they are working together with the Ministry of Energy, with the water supply, they are brought GWCL on board. They've come around to look at it and they are taking estimates. So we are looking at it in different phases. When we bring, we get the full list out, we make it available to all our clients, so that year groups will know that this is what we can take. Then we'll have cost estimates. So you know that this is something which as a year group we can take. And then there are certain things which we see will definitely go beyond the year groups and we'll have to do it at a higher level. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wrap us up with it.
Akrapat, can you unmute yourself? We can't hear you because you are muted. about 
was the the uncovenant patriarchs in the So it's about the upcoming National Science and Mass Peace. You should make it a target. I should empower the team and the teachers. I empower them, I think the teacher, the teachers are about nine. You should empower them and push the students. Thank you very much. We, we, we will definitely do that again. I bet you. I cried about why you bought seventy-nine, one thousand dollars. Clap for you. Um, I cried about why you bought seventy-nine. I wanted to volunteer my services. I do a lot of polling for institutions and things like that. So if you want to do a survey, you have a list of projects you want people to vote on or give your opinion on. I'm happy to organize it free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello, GTA German. GTA German. I can do GTA business. Thank you, Mr. President. Just two quick issues. Um, I have seen many projects done by year groups here that, that have maintenance issues or get vandalized by teams, etc. I just want year groups and the executive committee to look at security and maintenance of projects. We do beautiful projects, donate it to the school, and then um, they get, there's, a, there's a problem with it, and the headmistress is calling the year groups to come and fix it. But the year groups will also say, oh, We've given you the project, we expect you to maintain it. Or uh, the recent one where um, thieves vandalized the beautiful project of the modern kitchen um, near the, the uh, dining hall. Number two, I think we should also have a policy or put an action plan where we can encourage aggressors to get into education and have them progress to come and leave the school. Uh, presently, um, the whole school administration, where they meet at the leadership of the school administration, there's not a single Accra. A few years ago, we had about two, the head and the assistant. Now it's zero. And it's sometimes very difficult to get addressed, very senior in GS. So, I know Wesley girls, they have a policy of trying to encourage the ladies from national service to get into education, rise through the system, and then they're able to shortlist and get their heads. We, should, we can also look at that model and ensure that um, we get senior address, I mean, we get senior members of GS who are address, and then when they come and head the school and are managing all these millions of dollars, they know where how to diligently use their funds. Thank you. Thank you very much. Address it, Alain. She's muted. You are muted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, now can I hear you. Good, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you all very much for taking time out to be there. It's it's what uh, everybody wishes for, that we'll be able to get together, put our shoulders to the wheel, and do for another afternoon. I have a couple of uh, things to let I want to read. First of all, um, there is a little group of, of the Akuras with uh, an online group and um, we have been looking at the renaming, possible renaming of buildings and uh, structures on our children's school. Um, we wrote to the board in November of 2019 before almighty COVID struck with a proposal. We have not uh, heard back yet. We are aware that the board has been met, but uh, we're wondering whether we can have the weight of the OE push push for for this particular um, uh, um, proposal. Specifically, it was to rename the art school after the Kofi Antiman. Most of the older class will know Kofi Antiman, might even have been taught by Kofi that he is one of the big, big, big uh, art figures of Ghana. So we thought that we could do that. And then following that, of course, it could be open and a lot of other structures, etc., could be named after 
specifically the Atlantic, not necessarily just aquarius. So that is one. Um, the second one, um, I have seen online in on a lot of the uh, Aquara chat groups references to national executive committee. We do not have a national executive committee. We have an executive committee. The OAS executive committee is worldwide. It's not national. So if we can please um, make sure that we all accept that and use that momentum. Third, and um, maybe not a, a big thing, but a very big thing for me. Please try and not use the Jubilee Club as table club. Can you find maybe a plain white cloth and put the, the crest on it, even the heads or so on? But I think we need, we need to um, give the Jubilee Club its position. It is one of the symbols of Achmoda. Uh, so, together with the crest, the Jubilee Club, in whatever color it comes, should be significant and treated with respect. Then finally, I pledge a thousand seats. Thank you. I press it, I say I link thank you very very much. We we are taking notes of all your four points, especially the last one. <laughs> So we, we, will, we will do as uh, you have uh, said. Well, definitely, I mean, everything that you said is important and uh, it will be reflected in uh, subsequent actions. Thank you very, very much. Any other business? Uh, while we are talking of pledges, I would like to suggest and plead with, especially the older ones like me. But as you write your way, think of Achimota School. It is not a tradition in Ghana, but I think it is something worth, you know, considering. You know, that somewhere in there, you can make, you know, Achimota one of your. You know. Thank you very, very much. It's one that I fully share. If there are no other matters to be discussed, either here or from online, can I get a motion for us to bring our meeting to a close? Uh, are you quite in a hurry? Oh, <laughs> I didn't finish talking the day with you. Okay, good. I brought her Richardson moves seconded by I brought and money really. So Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your participation, both physically and then virtually. I thank all our colleagues who made time, whether they were in the US or in the UK or Germany, South Africa, wherever they may have come from, Australia, making the time. I know some of you should have been in bed by now or being somewhere else, at church or something. Yeah. Uh, so we thank you. Can I get? A closing prayer. Will somebody online like to say the closing prayer? Any volunteer online to say the closing prayer? Let them be put to good use. Not that our name may go far, but that this nation will be filled with people 
put our nation to think of ourselves like our school. As those in attendance leave the meeting, we pray that you are going to take them all to their home safely. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.